Welcome to the Berkeley Heights Board of Adjustment virtual online public meeting. This meeting is being held electronically via Zoom virtual meeting service and will be conducted in conformance with all regulations of the Sunshine Law. Proper notice has been posted on the township website and sent to the newspaper of record. The agenda for the meeting, as well as the instructions for public participation in the meeting, have also been posted on the township website and sent to the newspaper of record. The agenda items will not necessarily be heard in the order listed, and the meeting will not continue substantially past 10.30 p.m. All supporting documents can be found on the Zoning Board of Adjustment webpage on the township website. We will start with uh, oath of public officer for newly appointed member John C. Caglia in replacement of Jerry Nappy and his unexpired term 1231-2024. So Mr. C. Caglia, if you could raise your right hand and just repeat after me. I state your name. I, John C. Caglia. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Or affirm. Or affirm. That I will support the constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and that I will faithfully discharge the duties and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of a member of the Berkeley Heights Zoning Board of Adjustment. The, the duties of a member of the Berkeley Heights Zoning Board of Adjust, Adjustment according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Welcome back as a regular member. Perfect. Can we get a roll call, Regina? Mr. Sullivan. He sends his regrets. Mr. Cobiello. Here. Mr. Delia. Here. Mr. Ringwood. Do not Mr. Sylvester. Here. Mr. Pareda. Here. Mr. Sincaglia. Here. Excellent. Next uh, adoption of the minutes, June 23rd, 2022. Has anyone had a chance to read the minutes? I've read them, Mike, and they appear to be what my memory at the last visit was. Make a motion for accept. I make a motion to accept. Can we get a second? Second. Okay. We have a second by Mr. Delia. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? One, two, three, four, five, five yay, zero nay. On to adoption of resolutions. First resolution is application 220007, 41 Putnam Avenue, proposed reconstruction of an existing single family dwelling due to fire damage. Mr. Prater, did you have a chance to read the resolution? Yes, I did, and it seems to be in order. Make a motion for accept. Make a motion to accept. Can we get a second by Mr. Sylvester? I make a second on this. Roll call, Regina. Mr. Coviello. Yes. Mr. Delia. Yes. Mr. Sylvester. Yes. Mr. Pareda. Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Second resolution for this evening is application 220011, Anthony Wargo, 202 Springfield Avenue, new two-story addition and over a covered front porch for a growing family. Mr. Sincaglia, did you have a chance to read this resolution? Yes, I did. And I found it in order from what we approved last month. And you make a motion to accept? I so move. And can I get a second by Mr. Pareda? I second that. And a roll call. Uh, Mr. Pareda is not eligible for that, oh, that one. Mr. Sylvester? I second that motion. Mr. Cobiello? Yes. Mr. Delia? Yes. Mr. Sylvester? Yes. Mr. Sincaglia? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Excellent. Thank you very much. On to applications for review. The order this evening will be application 220012, 116 Washington Street. On to application 220013, 
148 Springfield Avenue, and then the closest out application 1421 40 Russo Place. Mr. Ramital, I'll bring you off mute to start with 116 Washington. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I we also have with me tonight who will begin the presentation, uh, Mr. Rothstein. Uh, Leo Rothstein is present at the meeting. I believe hopefully he's available and on, on the, not on mute. Uh, so, and Mr. Ramital, it has uh, come to our attention that this application has been deemed incomplete and will be carried to August 25th, 2022 with no further notice required. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, thank you very much. I've, I've had uh, several uh, several uh, conversations over the last week and a half or so about this application due to the uh, inconsistency, for lack of a better word, of the various uh, calculations. And I think part of uh, what I'd like to do, and I, I, I had spoken I never did speak to Mr. Sullivan last week, but Mr. Sullivan was kind enough to do a, a summary matrix, which sort of helped to summarize everything of which I presented to uh, to the board a few days back. Um, and I think with the clarification, it, it, it won't take long to describe why the issues are where they are, uh, because it appears that the the presentation or the final numbers, the final total is rather onerous, but in reality, there were certain things that took place uh, pre-ownership by Mr. Rothstein that were not properly identified by whoever it was that came before him. Uh, so I, I would like to make a presentation and if, it's, it's a, if the board would accept that, I believe it's something we can get clarified rather quickly. Mr. Chair, yes, um, we do have to start the hearing at least just to carry it. And I will note for the record that I did review the notice and it was sufficient as to form and content. There was one property owner left off, but we did, uh, Mr. Ramatol did personally contact them and reach out to them and they waived the notice. So we do have jurisdiction to hear this matter. However, if it's being deemed incomplete, then we can go ahead and it might be helpful for everyone if we just figure out what additional information we want from Mr. Ramental, and then we can go forward from there. That would be great. That 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 I appreciate that uh, that commentary. Um, if it's if it's acceptable, Mr. Chairman, I would like uh, just for the record for Mr. Uh, Rothstein just to basically give a preamble paragraph presentation as to what they're doing and why they're doing it. Okay, would that be possible? That's fine. Okay, and I will swear everyone in. Thank you. If you'd all raise your right hand, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you, God? I do. I do. Thank you. And Mr. Ramatol, if you could just qualify yourself briefly. Certainly. Um, James Ramatol, owner of GRE Architects in Berkeley Heights, been a, been a registered architect since 1979, have been in front of this board many, many, many times. We accept. Thank you. And Mr. Rothschild. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Can. Great. Well, thank, thanks so much for, uh, for allowing us to, uh, to speak. Thanks for uh, reviewing our application. Um, we're, we're in front of you today to uh, ask for a variance. I'm sorry, is it my back backlog or background noise? No, are we good? I think we're okay. Okay, great. Can hear you. Um, so we, we're a family of four, bought this house in early 2016. Uh, it's a modest four bedroom, two and a half bed uh, house that was renovated and expanded uh, by the builder prior to our purchase. Um, some of the um, items added to the, the previous home um, included a, a double wide driveway, um, uh, a patio in the back, um, a walkway that connects the, the front, the driveway and the patio, the paved walkway. Um, and a mudroom addition, which is basically the side entrance for the house to be used as a main entrance. Um, shortly after purchasing the house, we applied for a permit and were granted permission to add fencing around the perimeter of the property, as well as um, a shed. That was a separate permit, uh, permitted and approved um, under 100 square feet. So we have a shed that's 96 square feet in the left corner of the property. Uh, and then in 2017, um, well, we, we have two children um, that have severe environmental allergies, so most of the time they spend indoors. 
Um, so the uh, absence of a family room in the house, because it's a rather small house, um, compared to some others in the area, uh, we decided to construct a sunroom addition above the existing patio. So uh, we applied for variance since we are an R10 non-conforming small lot. We applied for variance and um, after discussion, uh, we were granted permission and we built a three season room. Um, so fast forward to today, um, we are in front of you asking for another variance for uh, functional reasons. The, the, the kids are growing and uh, you know we just need a little more space. Uh, so we're looking for some, some basics. Uh, a, a small study, um, a slightly larger garage. The garage actually is a very small garage, so our SUV does not currently fit. So we're just asking for a modest um, uh, expansion to a garage just to make it a little bit longer. Um, it's a very small master bathroom, uh, with only single vanity um, and a tiny shower. So uh, a, a small expansion of the shower above the garage, um, a small study or a closet space rather, uh, above the existing uh, mudroom um, and um, um, a front uh, a front walk-in, which uh, we always wanted but never had uh, because the current uh, walk-in or oh, the door opens right into uh, the staircase. So it's not being used. So we're using the, the side entrance and mudroom full time. Uh, so we'll actually stop using the, the side entrance um, if we are able to give ourselves a normal uh, uh, walkway and, and uh, foyer, so to say, uh, up front, um, and a um, small study off the uh, left rear of the house, um, just to give ourselves a, a little, little privacy when needed, reading the like that. So um, all in all, very small enhancements. I know it uh, looks like four different ends of the, three different ends of the house, but very, uh, very small in size, and uh, they're not going to be any closer to the rear property lines or the side property lines than the current structure. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you. Okay. Um, th thank you very, thank you, very, Mr. Rossi, for that general presentation that that helps to set the stage for uh, the summary. Um, part part of the part of the dilemma, um, and I'm, I'm going to fast forward or step back for a moment and talk about uh, one a very important thing that I think has a major impact on this whole property and also the uh, former applications. Um, the shed, the, let's start with the building, the principal building. Uh, Mr. Rosting received a permit, as he stated, for the shed. Uh, at the time, it was not deemed to need a, uh, a variance, even though that does add percentage of coverage uh, to the to the building, of course, the total coverage as well. Uh, I believe the original property, or I should say the original house that was uh, renovated and expanded, made it just underneath the threshold of uh, the the 30%. Uh, that said, the shed would obviously have kicked it over that percentage, but apparently it was decided uh, by presumably the zoning officer that a uh, that, that a variance wasn't required and, and a permit was granted as well along with the fence. Fence has nothing to do with zoning, but you know, as long as it complies. So that in and of itself started the ball rolling into probably the wrong direction. Then when, when the Rothsteins applied for their application in 2017, um, the, the shed was not mentioned in any way, shape or form. Uh, and nor, nor was uh, 269 square feet of paver walkway around the side, nowhere seen on any drawings that they had. And the board, of course, without knowledge of this, would just think what, what they see is what they have. So when I was presented with the project, I had to do all the calculations of all the things that I saw, okay? Um, fortunately, from, a, from the shed perspective, it was decided to add the shed square footage to the total uh, total building coverage because there was at least a permit granted. So that kind of made sense and that, that kind of allows us not to have to worry about the shed. Uh, but the 269 square feet of, of paver, which is significant to not only the other coverage, but also the total, it is to me an unfortunate hardship that the owner didn't know anything about. So we'll, we'll get to that in a second, but I, I just want to set the record as to why the numbers are where they are. The three, uh, the three additional um, improved 
segments that are in fact impacting the uh, the total coverage are a 120 square foot rear study on the in the back left area. That if, hopefully everyone, I can present this on on the and I, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you'd like, I could certainly share a screen to make it easier to read. Would that be more beneficial, well, yeah, es es especially for the you know for anyone any homeowner that's that's viewing the documents? Yep. Okay, let me find my documents so I know I'm working with the right ones. Uh, let's start here. This this should be able. This is one we can share. Okay, here we go. Great. So I'm going to just scroll around a little bit and do a little zooming in and out. Okay. This I can't document. see it. Am I the only one who can't see it? No, you're. Um, you've started sharing, but you're not sharing the actual document. Oh, uh, is is it? Do you not see the architectural site plan? No. Okay. Nope. It just says you've started being okay. sharing. Are, are you sharing? If you have multiple monitors, you may. Uh, well, I, I I went to a single monitor, but may, and that may be the reason. So let me uh, hold on a second You're with me. Apologize. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. What can I do here to make it simpler? Say share. How about now. No, not yet. Still can't see anything. Okay. Well, and we're we're gonna go. It's, it's some sportscaster said, let's go to the videotape. Uh, let me. Uh, I will find that for you. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it momentarily. Uh, and I apologize for it. And it, it, thank you for making a note of that. I was doing my presentation in multiple screens prior to, uh, to but I, I pulled my computer off, so I have a single screen. So give me a moment to get that information in front of us. And I should be able to get that done. Uh, combined zoning, this is the one. Okay. Uh, we're going to go to revision eight. Now, can you see this document? Not yet. No. no. Still not yet. Well, that's that's not helping anybody. Um, well, here's what I why, why I'm not sure why that is. Uh, I hit. How about now? Anything? No. It says you started screen sharing. I'm going to uh, end the screen sharing, but it says you started. Uh, but it, it, if it's just a um, blank, must be it must be a, it must be a glitch in my on my side because of the double screen possibly. And, um, and that's okay for this application because I think we're going to be able to just talk through this application. We wouldn't vote on it this evening anyway. Just want to make sure we provide you and your applicant the information needed so when we do come back in, okay. in August, we're set. Um, and, and really, in, in speaking with Mr. Sullivan, I think the biggest thing would be just a new, clean application with the numbers. So understanding the numbers tonight for the board that is here, so when they're looking at it again next month, they, they understand it. And I, and I think you've uh, laid out some of it. The shed makes complete sense, considering it was never calculated, not the homeowner's fault, should have been, uh, won't, should not be held against them. It wouldn't be held against them. Uh, there's a legal term. I think it's a stopple, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that grants them the ability to have that right uh, that was a mistake on our side so we're not going to penalize them for that right right the other items is what we would look at going forward uh you know the 269 square foot of walkway that wasn't on any drawing up until now uh i don't know if you know how, how it was missed or what the homeowner can do that may be something right if the homeowner can try to find something prior an old plan uh images prior to purchase that shows that this is here when they bought it missed in a calculation uh something that just benefits them right to, for proof that shows that it was there before. right that would be helpful and by which and by the way mr Coviel, um just to do the math that's 0.59 percent of the coverage that expands you know to the this the magic number over 30. so that in and of itself is is more if you will is a deal breaker that may not have even had it been presented properly Back in the day, yeah. that would the board may have looked at that differently than than they did when they when the uh, the good news about the sunroom it was a swap of other coverage for building so that was a zero net gain. And one one of the notes that I would uh, see on the application if I, and maybe I have this wrong but uh, in on the front page where it says required it says seventy five hundred square feet I believe required is ten thousand square feet in the R ten zone which would then show that the the applicant just has a hardship due to lot size. Yes. Lot size is 25% undersized. 
that would obviously make a difference in the application. Uh, in reading yes. this application, somebody may look at it and say, well, the lot size is supposed to be 7,500 and is 7,500, so there's no hardship. So right. I would maybe correct that in, in the application go forward as you're looking at the numbers, right, and showing why uh, the numbers are higher than would have been. Thank you. Appreciate that thought as well. Uh, and it just to summer, and it just in summary, just to cut it close, since we're going to uh, table this for uh, August, unfortunately, um, it's it's uh, the app. The, the three the three additions are relatively modest. There's 120 feet in the rear. That's the largest, actually, of the three. Then we have a uh, we have a 70. My, my drawing. Right here. We have a 72 square foot foyer and and a covered portico. By the way, so that's a combined 40 feet of actual building footprint, and then another 32 feet of of uh, a portico, which at least at this point in the zoning ordinance still requires to be put in building. I understand there's some, and hopefully there will be some new variants that allows porticos not to be considered at a certain calculation, but that's not for this particular application. And last but not least, we have a 76 square foot garage expansion, uh, as, as Mr. Uh, Rothstein stated, to be able to literally pull a car into the garage because it's a very, very tiny garage because these houses, the house that was built originally probably back in the 40s or 50s over there on Washington Street uh, was rather small. And I believe this particular developer who developed it left the same footprint in place, just built on top of it. Uh, so generally speaking, those are the, the, the highlights of the rationale. We'll be able to make a, a bit more formal presentation. And unfortunately, I'll get my uh, make sure I have all my technical uh, documentation up in front of us as well for the next meeting. Uh, I will make the, the, the uh, updated changes to the application, not just in the 10,000 square feet, uh, Mr. Coviello, but also uh, we were able to find, and this was a getting calculation issue for me, we were able to find a few square feet uh, or reduce some of the square footage due to um, double calculating on, on that document. So I think with all this all said and done, we'll have a you know much cleaner presentation for, for August uh, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be able to present that uh, in a very cogent way uh, so everyone can see it, both public as well as uh, the board members. That'd be great. And again, Mr. Rosson, if you if there's any way you find a photo that dates prior to, or you know, even when you're you're first moving in, if you have any photos, that just show the sidewalk that where it was there and you didn't put it in again. As Mr. Amantal said, that's about five percent of coverage. Uh, significant when you're talking about lot size and what that does for the application. If not, that's okay. You can still present, but that would just help your case uh, as we move forward. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Coviello and the board for hearing us, at least on a summary presentation. No, very helpful for, for next month. And Mr. Okay, Coviello, I think we should yeah. also open it to members of the public just in case, since we did technically. Yeah, if there's any questions, we could maybe answer those too. Absolutely. Can I get a motion to open to members of the public, Mr. D'Elia? Second motion to open to members of the public. And can I get a second by Mr. Sincaglia? Second. This meeting is now open to members of the public. If you would like to be heard, please virtually raise your hand using the feature in the reaction section and you will be brought off mute to ask questions about this application. Give it a second. Seeing no one, can I get a motion to close to members of the public, Mr. Sylvester? I make a motion to close this to the members of the public. And a second by Mr. Pareto, please. I second that motion. This is now closed to members of the public for this application. And Ms. Wolf, I guess we will just carry Regina till August 25th. No notice required. No further notice required. And our next hearing date is August 25th, 2022 at 7.30 by Zoom. So if you are here for that application, please come back to our next meeting. Excellent. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time, Ms. Rothstein. Thanks. Mr. Raventhal, you are still on deck, so don't go anywhere. Um, uh, what I'm going to do, though, Mr. Coviello, if you don't mind, I am going to go back to my split screen so I yeah. get that correct. Okay, so I'm just going to come off the, uh, the video for a moment, okay? That's fine. Take your time. And Matthew Mitchell, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it's Matthew's iPhone. 
And we'll bring you off mute while we wait for Mr. Ramenthal to uh, get his technical abilities back. And also on this one, our board member Sinclaglia will have to recuse because he is within the 200 foot property range. And I Mr. did- Mitchell, Can you, um, we're, do you see where it's, it's asking you to come off mute? Perfect, thank you. Uh, Ms. Not Hall, a problem. Do you want to swear him in prior to uh, Mr. Ramatol coming back from technical difficulties or should we wait for him? Let's wait because I have to swear uh, him too. Uh, but for the record, I can say that I reviewed the notice and it was sufficient as to form and content. It was mailed on July 11th, published on July 13th. Our hearing is July 28th. So that was more than 10 days in advance of this hearing. The board does have jurisdiction to hear this. Excellent, thank you. And Mr. Mitchell, we'll just wait for uh, Mr. Ramenthal to come back online. So he is ready to present as well. Sure. Only I can say uh, thank you for taking the time to review the application and um, give us an opportunity to present what we have here. Absolutely. Technology is great when it works, so we'll give Mr. Ramond Hall a moment uh, when he is able to show the diagram. It does make it easier for us uh, as a board and the community to walk through the application. So. Uh, I like to say technology is your best friend in television. That's right. That's exactly right. Okay, Mr. Anatole is rejoining the meeting. So we'll give him a second. Excellent, he's back. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and Mrs. Wolf. Sure, so if I can have Mr. Mitchell and Mr. Ramtal raise their right hands. Thank you, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do, I do. Thank you, Mr. Ramtal, if you can just qualify yourself. Uh, technology area architects, Berkeley Heights, been a member of a, uh, since 1979, good standings, and I have uh, been in front of this board for many, many times. We will accept. Okay, Mr. Amethyl, do you want to try and share your screen and then uh, introduce the application? Or yeah, let, let, let me do that to be sure it works. Uh, good, good point. Good, good point. I am going to do that now. Uh, let's do that. Can you see anything yet? No. no, sir. It just says Jim Ramenthal has started screen sharing, but there is nothing showing. Okay. Uh, very good. Okay, let me let me get the, the right document in front of me. It's probably just in the wrong screen. Just bear with me. Uh, okay. Still see nothing, correct? Right? No, sir. Okay. Well. Then I'm just going to go over to my other screen. I think that will probably be the correct one. So I have Mr. Mitchell's application up in front of me. I do have a, a, um, yeah, his, his file here, but that doesn't help anyone that wants to do something. Uh, let's start. Are we beginning to see something? That's that's the question. No, sir. Oh, no. <laughs> but why is that? If you look at the little zoom thing on the bottom, is there like multiple windows? Can you see like the next to the blue? I, I do see that. Is meeting control? Maybe that because I don't have that. I just have zoom and zoom meeting. So maybe that's it. Maybe the meeting control will help me get there. Usually I can do this very clearly, cleanly, and easily, but it's not going to do. Let me try new share. Maybe that does it. 
Any luck? Mm. No. Resume share. How about that? Any luck there? Not mm. uh, yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is good. This is not a good. It's worked in the past. Why is it not working? No. So uh, it does say we are viewing your screen, but the screen is blank. You have, you have a screen or? It's all, it's just, it's a black screen that says Jim Ramenthal started screen sharing, but uh, we, we don't see any uh, actual documents. Okay. That's, uh, uh, if, I, if I may, and if it is at all helpful, I, I do have uh, what was submitted. Uh, I may be able to share it as well so that Jim can talk through it. Yeah, um, uh, Matt, if you could do that, that would be helpful because it minds uh, my technology is not working for me today for some reason. There we go. Mr. Mitchell, your phone is now live and we are seeing the document. Great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mitchell. Okay. Um, would you be kind enough, uh, Matt, that you have control uh, to uh, just zoom in on the first sheet, T1, which is the site phone? Are, are, are we seeing that in a very narrow window? Are, he's not, because he's on his phone, we're seeing it in, in the, oh, uh, okay. the phone. Okay, I see the phone view. Okay, I got it. All right. Uh, that's fine. Oh, here we go. Yeah. There we go. Now we're talking. And for the record, what is the date of these plans? Are they the same ones that were submitted with the application? Yeah, yes, they are. Yes, they are. And uh, it's been on. By, for some reason, I... Uh, the, the images are in the upper right hand corner. Uh, in the upper right hand corner of the drawing, uh, Matt, if you'd be kind enough to read that because uh, my video feed is right. There we go. Thank you very much. Upper right hand corner in this area. Well, I, my cursor doesn't work. It is uh, five. Uh, this is one, Mr. Ramath, this is one revision. We have uh, the ones we have are revision D, June 1st, 2022, issued to the zoning board. For approval, this one is from 525. So this may not be the most updated set. Oh, okay. Uh, the the uh, then allow me to. I, I don't believe, if my memory serves me, uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't believe there's any uh, anything of any consequence that change the percentages of coverages. But let me just double check the one for the record. If you need a moment, and they may not because again, on it says. Uh, B was revised and reissued. C was just issued to zoning officer, and D was issued to zoning board for approval. So there may not be any changes. It just may have been the date of when you did something. And if that's okay, uh, it's strictly a sequential thing. Thank you for that. Yes, th this should not be a problem. Uh, let let us go to if I can uh, zoom out. Uh, a little bit. Should, we, should we mark this as an exhibit since it is different, just from a date perspective? Even though the calculations are the same. That it's just we're looking at same calculations, different dates. We just mark it as an exhibit. Yeah, let's mark it as an exhibit also because in case people of the public are watching, they won't have the newer version. So let's mark this as exhibit A1. So A1 exhibit titled a T1 site plan and zoning uh, information. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that said, if you could zoom out a little bit to show the, the property specifically, Matt, thank you. Right there is good. Okay. Um, since I don't have cursor, you can see my cursor, so I can't present anything, but this is a quarter lot on Robbins and Springfield. Hopefully everyone is aware of the property or hopefully is driven by, if not uh, at least reviewed it uh, specifically. The the uh, it's a it's a single family rent style home. It is um, it has a driveway uh, and garage detached garage on the Robbins Avenue side, but the property does in fact face uh, Springfield, literally right across the street from, from the uh, say park parking lot. Um, uh, the homeowner. I can speak on behalf of the homeowner, but the homeowner, the reason for the homeowner is making the, the uh, asking for the requested expansion is predominantly because uh, they just uh, recently had their third child about 
Uh, what is it? A month ago, uh, Matt? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, six weeks ago. Six weeks ago, and and with a three bedroom small house, there is definitely a need to expand, as many many uh, homeowners do in Berkeley Heights and surrounding towns. That said, uh, the there is pre existing uh, lot uh, pre existing front yard setback issues. Obviously, the the setback on uh, on Robbins is significantly uh, uh, tighter than the one on Springfield, but, but neither of them comply with the 50 foot setback requirement. Um, what you see in this image, you're seeing uh, a basic rectangular structure with uh, with a little with the garage in the rear. Off, we'll, we'll call that to the south because North is actually down the sheet just for orientation purposes. What you're also seeing is a, is a double hatched area on the second floor, which in fact uh, is is a bit further removed from Robbins to um, not require a front yard setback there, but it does require the front yard setback for uh, for the, the principal building. Additionally, uh, the client is proposed, proposed and is and we have designed a portico over the front door because where there was none. Uh, we we obviously are, have presented that too, just for a little bit of enhancement and to give a little bit of cover to the front door. So when the Amazon person comes, it's the the, uh, the Amazon uh, the Amazon uh, packages are in some degree of of, uh, of uh, protection. That said, uh, if you would slide down, uh, Matt, please to the second drawing, which is the which are the floor plans. This will be helpful. Okay. And thank you. So um, the what, what we're going to do first, would you can slide that down to the first floor first, and we'll to the second floor. And just for the record, we'll call this part of Exhibit A one, so we don't have to have another exhibit. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, that that'll be great because that made a total one document. So um, there is a pit. Is there first floor, second floor? Is there not that this is a part? This is actually a partial. Um, first floor because there's a bedroom that's existing that is separated from the garage, but we're going to create a pantry in part of that mudroom, which doesn't exist now. And, and, uh, and they just modify the mudroom and access the, the, the mudroom from an adjacent door to the left there, as you can see. Now, if we could slide up to the second floor, which is where the majority of the work is, uh, we have to create, since it isn't much, we have to create a new second, uh, new stair tower second floor so when you access you can see now clearly uh, the majority of the second floors to the right of the property and the left side is the first floor that will remain as is it with no, nothing built over the top of that uh it has a master bedroom suite it also has uh another bedroom and a little uh study in the rear as well uh will be we'll call that nursery right now but eventually it will become a study for the for the homeowners down below, uh, the the bedrooms down below will remain, and that will be for the children, for the two, like the older children that are still adolescent, but they'll, they'll have that space. So th this becomes the, the new four bedroom house that didn't exist before. Uh, do I have my do I have my bedroom count correct? Uh, two downstairs or three down. Yep, it'll, it'll be two downstairs. Two downstairs. downstairs well. We're taking. We're eliminating one of the stair. That's what. I'm sorry. That's correct. Yep. So yeah, so the step that we so we will still have a technically a four bedroom house when when the work is completed. Uh, sliding down, let's go the elevations and kind of swift quickly go through those so we can see how what the house looks like. Uh, unfortunately, because I can't get you see show you the photographs that I have presented. Uh, We'll have to forego those, but uh, we're we're doing a pretty significant job to this uh, to this holistic <clears throat> ranch style house by bringing a large you know second two story element to the right side of the of the existing footprint I might add, which is important to note. Uh, and of course, the portico has noted changing out the windows across the entire first floor uh, in a couple of their rear elevation as well. The, the, uh, the right side elevation that you see there is uh, actually, well, it, it, it's certainly in view, but the, the, if you know that property, 
there's significant vegetation between their next door neighbor. So it's hardly even noticeable from the street when you drive up and down the street. Uh, and there's also some additional tree cover, in particular one, I think there's an ash there the, very close to the house. And that's a, that must be 80 to 90 feet tall, which will probably be removed as part of this project for two reasons. A, the cover itself, and also the protection of the house should, you know, should there be a, a storm, which would severely damage the house if it happened to fall in that direction. And Mr. So Mr. Mr. The other two elevations. Apply for the proper permits for tree removal? Of course, the all permits will, will be received when it's appropriate. Um, and you may even choose to do that before it even starts the, starts the project. That's up to the, the homeowner. If we could slide and show the last two images uh, on this sheet, uh, Matt, that shows the rear of the house on the left. And then, of course, the left side of the nature, which has the garage. Uh, it, it, the garage is just out of out of view there. You'll see the uh, the side door where that's on the Robbins Avenue side. They currently exist, by the way. Uh, and, and that's where the mudroom is. Uh, and then there's that little separation between the garage and the mudroom. And at this point, we, we chose not, not to make the connection, which would make that part of the principal building, even though it's still considered part of the building coverage. Either way, it's still building coverage. Um, so in summary, that's the project uh, as, as we see it. The, the two variances that are sought are, uh, that if you be kind enough to go back to the first sheet, and just to summarize the two variants requested, that is in, under zoning data. If you could zoom in on that a little bit, uh, it'll be easier to read. Thank you very much. Okay. We are seeking variances for uh, building coverage where currently we are, we're currently actually at, at 50.11. So we're slightly over it with the existing footprint. Uh, and we're seeking just a modest uh, 0.2% because of really because of no, no other structure. Uh, and as far as the total coverage is concerned, uh, we're currently at 2739. So again, 0.2 requires a variance uh, to be had. Uh, what, one last item, which is not on this particular variance, and I, I, I want to seek guidance of both the, the board as well as the board uh, attorney. There is there was some late consideration by the homeowner to see if uh, there is an existing patio in the rear. And as you can see, it's currently 12. All, all of the other pervious coverages or other coverages comes to 12.28. Uh, the patio is a little bit tight. And while we didn't think about it during the application process, I would like if, there, if the consideration allows us to do this legally, I'd like to maybe add another 120 square feet to the overall uh, coverage of the property. And, and just to do the math, very simply, that is a percentage wise, that is a total of, of two. That is an additional, because I can't I'll have, to, I'll have to use my, my phone calculator. Just give me a moment, I'm sorry. Mr. Uh, Ramatol, just to make it simple, why don't we say that you're looking for up to 130 square feet? which would be 1% of lot coverage, still keeping you uh, below 30, and the total would be 28.59 at the 130 square foot. Whether you use all 130 or not, it'd be up to you, but if you apply for the 130, it's a clean 1%. That's great. And without having to go back to the board next month, that's all I'm asking. And uh, just to make sure you have the other, so we would be looking at proposed other coverage of 13.28% and total coverage of 28.59. Correct. Yes. That would be helpful. I appreciate that. If that's if the board deems that to be acceptable. Yeah. I mean, we can obviously the board will vote on it, but I think it's just a cleaner solution for 1% from, from a man. Round it up to, to uh, 1330. Thank you. <laughs> And would that patio just be uh, adding to the additional one, or would be would it be located somewhere else? Well, it's, it'll just be right now. They'd like to get a little bit more footprint for utilization. It's a really tight area. Unfortunately, if my photographs were were uh, visible, you'd be it'd be easy to see. But uh, I have to apologize for the uh, the lack of uh, ability to present that. 
No, no, that's okay. But if we could just slide over real quick uh, on this image, if we were thinking, is the is the additional patio going to be next to the garage or making the patio longer where it could go closer to the property line? Just so we want to make sure where this would be, because if it's behind the patio next to the garage, uh, it doesn't really impact anything again other than coverage. If it's going to the right, it gets close, and then it may be something we'd have to look at just in terms of setback. Uh, well, let's put it away. wherever it's Mr. Chair, or Mr. Kobe, I'm sorry, uh, it, it will, will comply and conform to the setback uh, requirements. Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit of both. As you can okay. see, it's relatively long and narrow, and I don't really see us elongating it out to the right there. I think it makes more sense to bring it in behind the garage. As long as we'll stipulate that any addition to the patio will conform to. Uh, all, without needing another variance, it'll it'll conform to all proper setbacks. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if um, if I just just add a, a few other things, you know, my my family has lived here, which will be six years this November. Um, we have, you know, for lack of a better way to say it, fallen in love with the community. My my daughter plays travel softball. She's made a lot of great friends here, and we're we're not going anywhere. <laughs> so. Um, we enjoy living here, and this is really uh, this position is really about the fact that we have a new child in the family, and uh, my second my second born will be starting kindergarten in the fall. So, uh, and we've made great relationships with the with the community, and um, you know I I thank you all as board members and fellow community members for being so welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Okay. If that is all, uh, Mr. Amatol, from you, you and your applicant, I'm going to just stop the screen sharing for a moment and open it up to the board members for any questions. We'll start with Mr. D'Elia. No questions at this point. Mr. Sincaglia. Uh, well, I, I, I'm recused on this, but I just want to say this oh, happens sorry. to be. Uh, Mr. We're going to have to wait for you to start. Oh, we will be open to members of the public. Mr. Pareda. Um, I don't have any additional questions at this time. It looks pretty straightforward. Mr. Sylvester? I agree with what Rob Pareda just said. It's, it's straightforward. It's well, well thought out. Uh, this looks like it's, we're, we're going up. We're not expanding left and right uh, other than the portico, correct? Uh, assuming all four sides of the property when done will match. Any additional tree work with proper permits would be pulled for that. Yes. Excellent. Uh, at, at this time, Ms. Wolf, maybe we'll open up for members of the public if that works. Yes, perfect. Can we get a motion to open to members of the public, Ms. Sylvester? Uh, can we open this uh, up to the uh, this motion? Can we open it up to the public? Yes, and a second by Mr. Pareda. I second that motion. This meeting is now open to members of the public. I do see one hand. Uh, from Marlene Sincaglia, so we will bring her off mute uh, and ability to speak. And Hi, Ms. Sincaglia, is this a question or a comment? This is a com this is a comment. Okay, so let me just swear you in. If you would raise your right hand, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to so help you, God? I do. Thank you. And can you just give us your address as well? Okay, Marlene Sincaglia, twenty two Robbins Avenue. Um, we've lived here for 34 years. We've, uh, our house is directly uh, diagonally across the street from the Mitchells. Um, we've had various neighbors in the past, but at one point, nobody lived there. The house went into disrepair. Luckily, the bank took over, redid it, and we are so lucky to have the Mitchells as our, as our neighbors. Although their house is officially on Springfield Avenue, the neighbors on Robbins, welcome them with open arms. Uh, the Mitchells are residents that Berkeley Heights needs to have, young families. Um, the fact that they're improving the house with this addition means that they're committed to stay in Berkeley Heights. They could have decided the house was too small and looked elsewhere, but yet they're part of the community and they wanna be part of the community. So I am very hopeful that this zoning board will agree with me and vote in favor of this variance because Berkeley Heights needs more wonderful residents like the Mitchells. Thank you, Mrs. The Sintagli. end. 
Any other members? Uh, Mr. Sintagli, I didn't mean to cut you off before if you'd like to speak. Uh, Mrs. Wolf will swear you in. If you would raise your right hand, thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. And yeah. your address, I guess, is still 22 Robbins Avenue? Yes. I, I just yeah, I just want to echo uh, what, what my wife said. Actually, 34 years to the day as we moved into the, our house. And I would say during more than half that time, that house, uh, prior to the Mitchells being there, most of the time was an eyesore. Um, and it, 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 it was certainly a blessing to us to see it got re remodeled uh, inside and so forth. And that we, we got a nice young family that came in there. And uh, as I agreed, it you know, be nice that, that they want to stay. And obviously, they, they, you know, the family size requires them to, to move forward. So, um, you know, we're, 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 my wife and I are totally in favor of this. Thank you very much. And seeing no other members of the public with a hand raised, I, can we get a motion to close to members of the public, Mr. D'Elia? Second motion to close. And a second by Mr. Pareda. And I second that motion. This application is now closed to members of the public. Uh, maybe a quick recap on the project and some of the stipulations. So we're making a move uh, on the patio to 130 square foot, additional if needed, bringing the uh, building coverage is still at 15.31. Other coverage is 13.28, total coverage to 28.59. So a building coverage variance isn't sought, a total coverage variance is sought, one for side yard setback and front yard setback, which are already pre-existing non-conforming uh, conditions. And then a, maybe a quick run through on some of the stipulations. Sorry, just to add that, just, excuse me, I'm sorry, that's a uh, did you mention that other, this other coverage is in fact expanding? Is that all? That, there were two I showed, but basically there's three variants, I guess, but for each of the areas, building, other, as well as uh, as well as total. It'll be it'll be building. Other won't need it. Uh, yeah, other will be thirteen point two eight. So that'll be the third one. On okay. The coverage, right. So building at fifteen point three one. Other at. 13.28 a variance for that, variance for total coverage at 28.59, as well as the variances for the pre existing non conforming uh, con conditions. Front yard setback, yes. Front yard and side yard setback, yep. Yes, thank you. Yes. And then the conditions would be that the uh, exterior of the dwelling will be substantially similar to the addition, everything will be uniform and will match. Any lighting will be downward directed so as not to result in spillage onto the adjacent properties. Um, I'm not sure if we need to do stormwater management on this one only because it's such a slight increase, but it will be subject to the review and approval of the township engineer. So he can review that, that the applicant will also obtain any permits necessary for the tree removal. I think that was it. Agreed. Can I get a motion on this application? No, motion. Mr. Dalia makes a motion for approval. Can I get a second by Mr. Pareda? I second that motion. And a roll call, Regina. Mr. Cobiello? Yes. Mr. Dalia? Yes. Mr. Sylvester? Yes. Mr. Pareda? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Mr. Mitchell, good luck on your project. Welcome to the town. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much, much, everyone. Appreciate that, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody is still good. We'll just power forward and move on to application 1421-40 Russo Place. Mr. Oliveira, I'm going to bring you off mute here. And OK. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Michael Oliveira with the offices of Chiesa, Shanian, and Giantamasi appearing on behalf of the applicant. May I just ask if Mr. Jacobs, who's the engineer for the project, if he has been uh, invited into the meeting? Mr. Jacobs is in the meeting. He is, uh, I could bring him off mute, but he is not on video. That's that's fine. So but he is in the meeting. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if you recall this, let me first thank the board and the uh, board's attorney for uh, its uh, consideration in hearing this application on such swift uh, and short notice. Um, if you recall this application, we've been here on several occasions now. It's a, a conditional use variance application for the parking of buses. We're here before the Zoning Board of Adjustment because 
we can't meet all of the conditional use conditions and therefore it requires a devariance. Um, we previously presented an application to the board or began to present an application and the board rightfully raised an issue with regard to the NJDEP issues that exist, specifically a stream encroachment, stream encroachment issue that uh, was created by the prior owner of the property, uh, whereby he missed, redirected the stream and to the consternation of the NJDEP. Um, at that time, the board was gracious enough to grant a temporary variance, uh, limiting the number of buses that could be parked on site to 25. There was already an approval in place to allow for the uh, repair, uh, minor repairs to the school buses that are on site, which expired in April, I believe 18th or so. Uh, that variance was also extended by at a, at a subsequent meeting to June 30th to match with the, the temporary approval that had previously been granted by this board as well. Right. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that we have gotten the NJDEP approval. We got it, however, within days after we had sent out the notices and had gotten the hearing notice for this July 28th meeting. Um, we are here this evening requesting an extension of the uh, existing or of the temporary approval, which expired on June 30th. It's important to note that the applicant, when June 30th came, uh, they actually shut down the operation because they realized that they had no approval to operate. We're here this evening asking the board to continue the uh, temporary approval until the end of September. Uh, we believe that in, within that time, we can resubmit our application to the board and be heard for the full application as we now have the DEP approval that was the uh, issue that was determining or lacking the, or not allowing the board to proceed with the full application. Excellent. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, everything you said is as accurate as to my memory as well. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly open it up to board for any questions about this application or on the extension. Mr. Dalia, any questions on the extension request? At this point. Mr. Sylvester, any questions on the application extension request? No. no. Mr. Sincaglia? Yeah, so this would just mean that the existing 25 buses and the minor maintenance can continue? Correct. Would be, we would go right from July 1st through September 30th, just so in case any use between July 1st and today had been in use, there'd be no infractions for the applicant. Uh, we weren't able to hear them until today when it expired. So uh, basically, we'd be taking what we had in place up till June 30th and then extending it until September 30th. Uh, hopefully, and the goal would be to get the applicant onto our September plan so they, they would be presenting prior to uh, expiration of this extension. Okay. Mr. Prada, any questions about the extension? Uh, the only question I have is knowing that, uh, you know, kids are back to school early September, will this affect their ability to run their normal operations at all come September being it's their busy season again? Actually, Mr. Chair, that's the reason for the request of the extension. We want to be in place and operating by the beginning of September. That's why uh, we are requesting the extension because we don't have the formal approval of the larger application. Uh, in an ideal world, we'd love to be able to park more buses there, but we understand the constraints and the uh, limits that the board has placed on us. And we're be, we'd be happy to accept the extension through the end of September with the limit at 25 buses. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, at this time, I'll do a quick open to members of the public if nobody else has any from the board. Uh, if any members of the public has a comment or question about this application, uh, can I get a motion to open to members of the public, Ms. Sylvester? I'd like to op open this to the public. And a second by Mr. Pareda. I second that motion. Uh, this meeting is now open to members of the public for this specific application. If you would like to make a comment or question, please virtually raise your hand. We will bring you off mute. Pretty certain there are no members of the public, but we will give it a second. Seeing no members of the public, I'll, uh, can I get a motion to close to members of the public, Mr. Sincaglia? So moved. And a second by Mr. D'Elia. Second by Mr. D'Elia is good. This meeting is now, or this session is now closed to members of the public. Um, Mr. Oliveira, any other comments you'd like to make on behalf of the applicant? 
No, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to comment that Mr. Peloso, who is uh, the operations manager for the applicant, is here to answer any questions that the board might have. And Mr. Jacobs, the engineer, is also here to answer any questions that the board might have. Excellent. Uh, thank you. I mean, uh, considering for, um, from my opinion that we we're just looking for an extension uh, through September 30th to give you the proper time for pair since you did get the approvals, but days late uh, from the ability to submit. I have no questions or uh, issues with, with the extension. Uh, but can I get a motion on this application for extension? And just Mr. Chair, for the record, I did provide a draft resolution so the board can vote on this and adopt and memorialize the resolution at the same time. So we can just do one motion for that as long as everyone's okay with the content of the resolution. And Ms. Oliveri, you're, you've, you've seen the draft resolution and are okay with it that this is the final uh, request for extension and that the next meeting we would see the full plan. Correct. Yes, sir. We have we have seen the resolution, and we are in uh, we will in full agreement with the terms. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, so, with that said, can we get a motion uh, on this uh, extension and resolution, Mr. Uh, Sincaglia? Yeah, I, I move the uh, amended interim resolution for temporary dur durational variance relief at Forty Russo Place. And can I get a second by Mr. Pareda? I second that motion. And a roll call, Regina. Mr. Coriello? Yes. Mr. Delia? Mr. Delia said yes. Mr. Sylvester? Yes. Mr. Pareda? Yes. Mr. Sincaglia? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Right, so, Amanda, in terms of carry, do we, is it without notice? Yes, we would carry to our date in September. I'm just not sure what that date is. I believe it's September 25th. I'll just verify, okay. Regina, if I'm not correct. It, but I believe it is um, September 22nd. Second, September 22nd. All right, so this matter will be carried to September 22nd. I assume we'll still be on Zoom. If there's not, then we might have to re-notice. But unless I hear otherwise, we will be on Zoom at that point. So September 22nd at 7.30 p.m for members of the public. And then all, all documentation will be in for all professionals on both sides to review well in advance. I'm sure now that you have all your approvals today. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board and have a great evening. You too, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Considering that we are done with applications, can I get a motion to open to members of the public for general comment or question other than application seen tonight, Mr. Delia? Motion to open members of the public. And a second by Mr. Sincaglia. Second. The meeting is now open to members of the public who have a comment or question about things other than the applications just heard. And seeing nobody raising their hands, can I get a motion to close members of the public, Mr. Pareda? I make a motion to close to members of the public. And a second by Mr. Sylvester. I second that motion. The meeting is now closed to members of the public. Can I get a motion for adjournment? Mr. Delia? And a second by Mr. Sincaglia? Second. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much. Try okay. again in August. August 25th, Regina? Yes. Yes. Perfect. We'll see you then. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.